Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. I'm gonna pair these two lenses. These are both crop lenses for your Sony cameras. So they're not FE lenses. They're meant for like an Alpha 6300, 6500, or if you're using on an A7R2 or A7S2, you're gonna have to put it in crop mode, Super 35. Um, I like them because they're small and lightweight, and I've been using the Alpha 6300 a lot. I'm gonna be getting a 6500 ends at some point. I'll probably buy one. Um, this one, like I said before, is a zoom 16 to 70. I've already compared this against my 18 to 105, which I'm actually using right now. Um, this one, again, is a prime 24 mil. So what I wanted to do here is compare them both, obviously, at 24 mil, um, just to see if there is any surprises. And there was a surprise. So this is going to be kind of a short review because I didn't go much past this particular test. Um, I have shot some shots with this one. But in this test, I actually found out that this one, a zoom, was actually sharper than the Prime, which didn't make any sense. These are both $998, they're very expensive. Um, maybe this one's worth it, but to me, this one is like, I don't know, this should be like a three or $400 lens. These are both Zeiss branded Sony lenses. Now, I've talked to people at Sony before. They basically said they design them, they make them in their factories and basically Zeiss comes over and looks at the lens, looks at the design and gives them a stamp of approval. So I think from what I understand, Zeiss is very hands off. Um, at least that's the impression I got talking to the rep. So I know we're paying a lot of money for this and I'm sure a lot of money is going to Zeiss. How much? I don't know, 25% of the cost is going to Zeiss? I have no idea. But it's kind of disappointing that they're so expensive because we're probably having to pay both Zeiss and Sony at the same time. Um, so they're very disappointed that they're this expensive. Maybe this one's worth it, but to me this one's not worth it because, like I said before, this one is actually duller in the corners. They're about equal in the center, but this one is duller in the corners at f4 and at f8. And I also looked at it f1.8, and what kind of bothered me there, and I knew it was going to be soft because it's going down to one, you know, wide open. But, and I knew the contrast was gonna be less, but there was kind of some, I'll show you, it's basically kind of a, the color of the text kind of changed as well. So I was kind of disappointed with that. And I know I have a 55 mil, which I really love, um, that it's a Zony lens. Um, and it has a lot of chromatic aberration, unfortunately. You can correct it in photos, but it's harder in video when you're shooting wide open against a really backlit type of situation. This one also has a lot of chromatic aberration as well. And I just want to give you an update on my monitor situation. I'm on my like eighth monitor I'm reviewing. I've got two in for review right now, which I'm sending back. I've got the ASUS APA248Q. It's a 24 inch monitor. Um, comes in around $325 on B&H. And then they got the Z24X Dream Color from HP, also a 24 inch monitor, both 1080 monitors. And that's basically what I'm looking for. I just did a poll on my, Twitter account and primarily I think it was like 78% of the people voted that they published 1080 and only like 13% published to 4k and so I'm one of those people that are published to 1080 so I like to view my stuff on 1080. I'm sending these two back um, I'm gonna get another one in next so it's an ongoing basically I don't like these monitors uh, start off with the HP this one comes in at $454 so I'm looking kind of in the lower range of a, you know, a decent reference monitor, I guess you could say. This is definitely on the lower side. I've looked at ones that are like in the $2,000 range before, maybe you've watched on my channel before. These ones are definitely cheaper. So what I'm trying to do is do a wide range. Like, I mean, how much better is a $2,000 monitor versus like a $325 monitor? You know, once when I try it, after you calibrate them, you know, do they hold calibration? You know, I've been using these for like a month. Um, so really quick, the ASUS, the one I've got up here right now, um, is pretty good off-axis, calibrates well. I'm using Display Cal and a i1 Display Pro from X-Rite um, Color uh, Probe. Um, but unfortunately, this one, the black levels in the corners really go, especially on the bottom. I don't know why the bottom, but especially on the bottom, the black levels get very milky. Um, they're not very um, black. So if you're doing a lot of stuff with high contrast or black, backdrop um, and you're trying to judge black levels this asus for 325 dollars didn't work out the well i know asus has got many other monitors but this one just didn't work out very well and then again the cheaper uh, hp dream color the 24 inch 
that one I just couldn't calibrate very well. It looked pretty decent, but um, when I always compared it to my large LG, which is right here, my uh, ultra wide curved monitor, usually after I've calibrated all the monitors that I've gone through over this course of this year, um, they all calibrate pretty close to the LG. The LG with it calibrated as well. They match pretty well. I mean, really, really close. But the HP, for some reason, I just couldn't get it to calibrate. It always looked, if I remember correctly, it always looked a little bit off, like I mean, just a little bit warm. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I just couldn't calibrate it after I tried calibrating it, calibrating it, and I just couldn't get it to look similar to my LG, which it should because all of the very expensive ones that I did, like the $2,000 monitor from ISO, ESO, whatever it's called, that one actually matched up pretty well. And the last thing I want to talk about is um, color. I'm still working on color. Um, in fact, I'll, what I've done here in this video, I've tried to emulate what a Canon camera looks like using the Sony um, Alpha 6300. Um, you know, the color science on all these cameras that I've got from Sony, um, like the new RX100 Mark V, the A7R2, the A6300, all the color science is very similar. They're, they're slightly different between camera, but not much. But there's a huge difference between Canon and Sony, as you can see here before I've graded it. And here is after I've graded it to match. And I've used a lot of different methods. I've been trying lots of different things. I get frustrated because I'll feel like, oh, I just figured it out. I know how to do it. And then I'll go into a different lighting situation, try to apply a lot or whatever I'm doing that I've created and then it doesn't work. So I'm like, I'll go forward a step and I'll take two steps back <laughs> to forward a step. And the more I learn about color, the more I realize I don't learn know much about color, but I feel like I'm making progress. Um, if these two cameras look pretty identical to you, in, especially in one situation um, where you are using charts and you've got two cameras, it's not that hard to do, but the, the harder thing to crack is how to give the Sony cameras the Canon color look on a consistent basis. That's what I'm trying to come up with a kind of a secret sauce recipe kind of thing. So that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.